Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my depression story, anxiety story, suicidal thought story, cutting story, all of that um, compared into my video. So let's take it back to... I believe for me, it started my ninth grade and 10th grade year in high school. For some reason, high school was such a hard transition for me, you know, from high school to middle school. And I was going through a lot of stuff and I was like finding myself as I got older. Um, my freshman year, that's when I was like, oh, I, I think I like girls and I had girlfriends and, you know, I was just messing with girls. I was like a whole like a for real I was like a lesbian for a whole entire year so I stopped, completely stopped messing with men I was only talking to girls and I have a video on my coming out story and I will put that video below um so you know my parents wasn't just so happy about that and then it was like I was running track and you know it was so competitive doing that trying to keep up with school and it, I, just, I don't know I just it was just a lot for me it was just like a lot going on and back then you know I didn't know how to communicate I didn't know how to express my feelings so everything just stayed inside it just it just built up until you know i would just explode and have all these these thoughts um so let's start with my depression like every day i was just i was just sad every day i just felt like oh i gotta get up i gotta go to school i gotta do all these things that i don't want to do but it's like I did, and then I didn't. Um, I always had this feeling like, oh, I'll never be good enough to do this. I'll never be good enough to do that. And I was very skinny back then. If you, if you watch my later older videos when I first started YouTube, you can tell that I was very skinny. I was very in shape because I ran track. I would insert a picture right here somewhere in this video. You can see that I was very in shape, but I always thought I was big. I was like pulling skin I'm like oh my god I'm fat I need to lose weight I, I can't run faster with all this weight it was just like a lot for me and then my anxiety like I would get very anxious at times just out of the blue I was get very anxious very nervous and it I don't know it was just a lot I, I can't remember at this point you know what sparked it for me um but I used to cry a lot like a lot a lot a lot a lot but it would mostly would be at night and you know how you listen to music and you would get into your feelings and i would just cry myself to sleep i listened to a lot of evanescence and that just didn't make it any better so it was just a lot going on and i just couldn't cope with my feelings i didn't know how to express how i felt to somebody without somebody judging me and looking at me like i'm crazy because mind you you know we're 14 and 15 years old how can you tell somebody you know you don't want to wake up the next morning you don't want to live anymore like how do you say that to somebody without them running and telling your parents and the whole cycle of that goes on and all that's going to do is just make it worse so I didn't say anything I kept my feelings to myself I kind of wrote in a journal but I was also scared to write in a journal at the same time because I was scared that my sisters would see it and um you know would tell my parents about the thoughts and my feelings that I had so let's fast forward a little bit I believe this is my sophomore year in high school second semester sophomore year in high school I started messing with this dude I met him on I met him online or whatever and um he was mentally emotionally abusive towards me the things that he would say to me were crazy. I would be crying. He'd be like, why are you crying? Stop crying. And he was very abusive. The things that he would say to me, he would constantly call me, blow up my phone. And if I would like, say I got home from school, I would get on Facebook for a little bit. Why are you on Facebook? Why aren't you calling me? So I had to turn my little thing off so you could see when I was online, you know. If you want to sleep on the phone or something, say I woke up in the middle of the night, you accuse me of not being sleeping, or you're doing this, you're doing that. And that really put a, a heavy weight on it as well. Like, it just didn't make me feel any better. 
at all. Because I would start to say things. Because he got into it with my family a couple times too. I would start to say things like, oh, well, if you didn't say that, he wouldn't have did this. If you didn't do that, he wouldn't have did that. So it, that just really didn't help my situation. So I kind of found, found a little outlet. And I just want to read you guys some of the poems I used to write. I wrote these poems. And they are, um, let me just see if I can show you. They are on Facebook because this is what I used to, how I used to vent to myself. Um, I don't want to cry. But I felt like my family couldn't see that I was hurting. Really nobody could see that I was hurting. So this is how I learned to cope. And to say how I felt. Um, at one point I didn't cut. My friend did. And I just always used to look at her like, why why did she do that? Why did why did she cut herself? You know, I just think that it's just so crazy. And one day I just did it and I just kept doing it because I felt like that released all of my pain, my frustration. I, I don't know. I just felt like it just, it helped me. I felt like I needed to hurt myself because I wasn't good enough. I wasn't doing the things that I was supposed to do. Even though I got good grades, I was doing good in track. And I was I was on track, but it's like everything else, it was just, it was just falling apart. So I wrote this February 5th, 2010. And I mostly wrote these at night. Once I, you know, was started, you know, thinking about stuff. So this is one I wrote at 10 o'clock at night. And this is honestly one of my favorite ones that I wrote. I personally don't like to read these things because it brings back all of those memories of the hurt and the pain that I was personally going through. So this one is called The Cutter. And I'm going to read this one to you. It says, she's hurt, internally dying, silently screaming, but you cannot hear her silent tears. The Cutter. Every day is a struggle, the struggle to be liked, the struggle to fit in, the struggle to feel pretty, life itself, the cutter. Cutting eases the pain, watching the blood that run from her arm, the tears that run down her face, you would never understand her faint and how she feels inside, the cutter. Every day is a struggle and now she's numb to the pain, the cutter. And this is the picture that I added to this one. And honestly, that's how I felt. It was numbing the pain that I felt inside. It helped me cope with how I felt and another one that I wrote is called her death note because I was very suicidal I always thought about it but I never really bought myself to do it this sounds crazy but for some reason I thought about tying this the string from the blind across my neck and just leaning forward but I'm like now I think back on it like all I was gonna do was pull the blinds out the wall and hit the floor but you know those are the things that I thought about and this one is called her death note as you can see I want to get the glare off but this one is called her death note and this is the picture that I added to this one of course again I wrote this at night I'm, I wrote this March 1st 2010 and at 9 o'clock at night and this is again her death note she writes her death note in the pitch darkness steady thinking about her life in her death note she writes why wasn't she ever loved why was she ever happy why is her heart crying these dire, ugh, deadly tears she wants to know why she feels locked inside herself in this death note her life doesn't mean anything she takes gambles with her life maybe death will bring happiness she is slowly dying writing her death note now she takes herself out of the misery and pain her death note is already going to cut off but um but yeah i just felt like nobody noticed nobody cared and it was just a lot for me um my cutting got so bad that at one point i did completely destroy my arm like it was so bad like it's in the middle of the summertime and I had to wear long sleeves because my arm was like just tore up I want to see if I could find a picture I remember my sister was going to I think her eighth grade prom and I'm in the picture with a long sleeve shirt on and nobody asked questions you know why are you wearing the long sleeve shirts in the summertime it makes no sense even like, you know, I had to go to track practice, I had to wear long sleeves, I had to keep my arms covered. Um, a couple of my friends noticed, like the one girl, 
we was uh, doing partner exercises and she was asking me questions. I really wanted to tell her, you know, it's none of your business, mind your business. And I was just like, oh, I fell. Another girl asked, and it's a park by my house that has a lot of wood chips. And I was like, oh, well, I fell into wood chips. She's like, that's not from wood chips. And I wanted to, I wanted to tell her, you know, it's not your business or how it happened. But I haven't done it in years. In years, I do have some battle scars that I'm going to show you guys. Um... Let's go over. This right here is from me. I cut it to the white meat. This was an accident, but it, it cut to the white meat and it left a scar there. That's a scar right here. Um, at one point, I did write hate into my arm. You probably cannot see it anymore, but you kind of see like the outline of the H here. But it went across here and then over here. You can't really see anymore. I wrote love right here. And it had hate and love. So yeah, those are my battle wounds. Um, I just want to say, just everybody pay attention to your family, your friends. You know, ask them how they're doing. Don't pressure them. You know, just ask them how they're doing and pay attention. Because I felt like my family didn't pay attention to me. And that's something that, you know, that should have been. Should have been caught, but you know, it is what it is. I learned how to deal with it and cope, and you know, I overcome it. I'm out, you know, so I would just suggest pay attention to your family and your friends. And I'm gonna end this video because my camera is dying. Hope you guys enjoy. I hope there's a lot of people who can relate to this video. Um, so yeah, you know, I just want to say if you need help, always reach out to somebody. You know, kind of tell them how you're feeling. Don't hold your emotions inside and don't resort to cutting because even though it, it gets rid of the pain, it leaves those nasty scars on your arm. And it's something that you always have to look at. Um, so, yeah, you guys, it's such a deep video. I try not to get too emotional about it because it really does hurt me looking back on it as, to see, you know, how much pain I was really in, the things that I was going through, the things that I was doing to my body. And it wasn't healthy for me. But again, like I said, I, I grew up and I learned how to communicate and talk, you know, and not, not let it get to that point anymore. So, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. If you have a similar story, please let me know. I will be so interested in hearing, you know, the different stories from people and the things that they dealt with in their life. So, yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Hi.